All right. Okay. Um, today, my guests will be the Food and Agricultural uh, Organization's chief economist, Maximo Ter uh, Torero, who um, has been a guest of the briefing previously, and Ronald uh, Tranbahui, uh, Tran WFP's deputy director for research assessment and monitoring division. Uh, they will be here to talk about the launch of the um, state of the food security and nutrition in the world. This is the annual flagship report by the food agencies to inform on progress towards ending hunger, achieving food security, and improving nutrition. This year's education edition focuses on repurposing food and agricultural policies to make healthy diets more affordable. Um, quick announcement for you on Thursday, starting Thursday afternoon and all day, most of the day on Friday, the United Nations and the European Commission will hold their first high-level dialogue, and that will take place at the Green Tree Foundation, just outside New York City. Uh, the discussions will be co-chaired by the Secretary General and the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. Uh, this high-level dialogue will explore avenues for the UN and the European Union for strengthening multilateralism, international cooperation, and partnerships. Throughout several sessions, participants will discuss a number of key challenges facing the international community and how these can best be addressed through increased multilateral cooperation. This includes peace and security, climate emergency, human rights, digital cooperation, as well as the global economic situation and the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. The delegations will also discuss the war in Ukraine and its global consequences, including efforts to alleviate the impact, especially on the most vulnerable, on the food, energy, and finance sectors. Um, you will have seen that in a statement we issued earlier this morning, the Secretary General strongly condemned yesterday's um, attack by Im uh, due to an improvised explosive uh, device against a convoy of the UN mission in Mali. As we mentioned to you yesterday, two Egyptian peacekeepers were killed. The latest number of injured is now nine. Um, and the uh, attack took place about 62 kilometers northeast of Gao in northern Mali. The Secretary General expressed his deepest condolences to the families of the victims, as well as to the government and people of Egypt, whose soldiers continue to pay the highest price in the service of peace in Mali. He recalled that attacks targeting UN peacekeepers may constitute war crimes under international law and called on the transitional authorities in Mali to spare no efforts in identifying the perpetrators of the attack and swiftly bring him to justice. The Secretary General also paid tribute to the peacekeepers of the UN mission in Mali, who with exemplary determination and courage continue to implement their mandate in extremely challenging circumstances in support of the people of Mali. Uh, moving slightly further east uh, to the Central African uh, Republic, our peacekeeping colleagues there tell us that th the mission has intervened to protect civilians caught up in clashes between the Central African Republic Armed Forces and the Union for Peace, a UPC rebel group, and that is being taking place in the Baskoto Prefecture. The violence erupted following an attack on an armed forces base in Dimbi, which forced more than 500 civilians to flee to a nearby school where the peacekeepers provided protection. The mission also used heavy machine guns to repel the assailants from the town. The situation is now reported to be calm, although peacekeepers remain in position and reinforcements were sent to ensure that security is maintained. Um, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the UN's Joint Human Rights Office has just released its monthly report. It documents an overall 8% increase in abuses and violations in May compared to the previous month, that would be April, with two-thirds of cases attributable to armed groups and one-third to state agents. Um, of deep concern is a sharp uh, rise in uh, compared to April in conflict-related sexual violence, with 89 women reportedly impacted. That's a 117% increase. Armed combatants were identified as the main perpetrators, and state actors were also responsible for some of the incidents. Our mission there, MONUSCO, is continuing to closely work 
with local authorities to prevent and respond to human rights abuses and violations and to support its good offices and technical assistance to support prosecution of perpetrators to contribute to an end to impunity. Um, on Somalia, the humani our humanitarian uh, colleagues are telling us that due to the drought, it is believed that there will be famine in eight areas of the country by September. More than 200,000 men, women, and children are experiencing catastrophic levels of food insecurity for the first time since 2017, and food security will likely not improve until the middle of next year. Uh, our humanitarian colleagues warn that more than 7 million people are already impacted by the severe drought, up from nearly 6 million in May. More than 800,000 have left their homes in search of food, water, and pasture. At least 200 children have died of malnutrition and disease since January. An estimated 1.5 million children under the age of five face acute malnutrition. Late last month, our partners launched the Drought Respond and Famine Prevention Plan to provide life-saving assistance and prevent famine in Somalia. The plan calls for nearly $1 billion to reach 6.4 million people through the end of the year. Separately, the Humanitarian Response Plan for Somalia, which calls for $1.46 billion to help 5.5 million people, is only 30 percent funded as of today. With nearly 4 million people having received assistance since January, we need much more cash and resources to meet the growing needs and avert a famine. From Afghanistan, uh, 27,000 people have now been displaced following the recent fighting in the district of uh, Balkabab in the Sar -er Pool province in the northern part of the country. Our partners are preparing to provide food and other supplies to more than 10,000 people in Balkab. Uh, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that families have fled to neighboring provinces in the north and to Bamiyan province in the central highlands. In Bamiyan, UN teams said there are more than 6,000 internally displaced people, and we, and along with our local partners, are providing people with food, health care, educational, psychosocial support, as well as cash assistance and other supplies. Also in Afghanistan today, flash floods were reported in Logar, Ghazni, Paktia, Maidan, Wandak provinces. Initial reports indicate that the recent flash floods killed six people, damaged hundreds of homes, and destroyed agricultural lands. We are working with our partners to carry an assessment in Logar province that will take place tomorrow to see exactly what the needs are going to be. A quick update from Sri Lanka, where our colleagues at the World Food Program today said that three in 10 households are food insecure, according to its latest food security assessment. Food inflation is alarmingly high. This month, there was a 57% increase in food prices, which has crippled the population's ability to put sufficient and nutritious food on the table. Three million people are now set to receive emergency food, nutrition, and school meals from WFP until December. WFP is prioritizing families who are unable to purchase increasingly expensive food, particularly those with children under five, pregnant and lactating women, persons with disabilities, this, this support will be delivered through in-kind food, cash-based transfers, school meals, and nutritional support. Already, WFP has distributed 2,100 vouchers to pregnant women in Sri Lanka. Uh, this morning, the Economic and Social Council's high-level political forum focused on sustainable development goal number four, which is quality education and linkages and co-benefits with other goals. This session explored lessons learned during the COVID-19 crisis and how responses can be directed towards the provision of quality education and lifelong learning for everyone. It is also considered how innovation in learning that emerged during the crisis included, including through digital technologies, can boost access and quality rather than worsen inequalities. This morning also included a short session on how to bolster local action to build back better from COVID-19 and support local authorities in the implementation of the SDGs. Um, Today, our friends at the UN Department of Global Communications launched a new initiative called Football for the Goals. This provides a platform to mobilize the, goal, the global football community to champion action around achieving the sustainable development goals. The initiatives will tap into the power of football to raise the profile of, these, of the SDGs and will drive behavioral change and sustainable practices in the football industry. 
Football for the Goals in recognition of SDG number five, gender equality, was launched on the opening day of UEFA, excuse me, UEFA's Women's Euro 2022, which is taking place in, the, in England, in the UK, with a conversation featuring our Deputy Secretary General Mina Mohammed, UEFA's uh, President uh, Alexander uh, Cheferin, and that was moderated by Melissa Fleming. Having recently unveiled uh, its own sustainability strategy entitled Strength Through Unity, which focuses on human rights and the environment, UEFA joins the initiative as its inaugural member. Uh, the uh, full conversation is available, and if any of you are interested in that story, please let us know. There are a number of people in DGC who can be interviewed. Um, UEFA, 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 U E F A. How would you pronounce? What did I say? UEFA. What did you say? Well, it must be great being a native. It must be fantastic being a native English speaker. Yeah. Jesus. All right. Any more comments? Okay. Let's go to another native English speaker. Go ahead, James. Um, sorry, no, it's just a simple follow-up, actually, um, on one of the things you mentioned, this um, meeting between the uh, Ursula von der Leyen and the Secretary General at Green Tree. What press arrangements are there? Uh, there will be a, uh, a photo spray uh, which we'll distribute. We will not have outside. Uh, so no, no stakeout? No, they may say uh, a few words uh, to UNTV uh, without... And we'll we'll send that uh, we'll send that to you. But so, no so, so so in other words, no press engagement because if it's UNTV yeah, and we're I, not it, there, it's statements, it, it, not press involvement. It, it, I I agree with your taxonomy. Okay. <laughs> yes, madam. Um, as you may know, Belgian lawmakers give initial clearance today to a um, prisoner exchange with Iran that could lead to release of an Iranian diplomat convicted of planning um, to bomb a rally of an exiled opposition group. What is the United Nations stand on this? And don't you think that is gonna give Islamic Republic of Iran the leverage to take more um, hostages to- I, I, I'm not, not, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Europeans or American hostages to just take, uh, use them as a tool in- uh I'm not, uh, I was not aware of this story, frankly. It's, it seems to me like a bilateral issue on which I have no, no comment at this point. Uh, Big tool. Thanks, Steph. Uh, as you said, the UN has just announced this report on global hunger, and given the numbers, how urgent is it for uh, the UN to have this agreement on the Ukraine grain deal, and uh, has there been any progress? What is the obstacle? Is it the Russians? Is it the Ukrainians? Can you tell us what's happening with the deal? Uh, the discussions are, are continuing, and you are, you are right to point out uh, the fact that uh, this, uh, this war is having an impact on uh, global hunger, not, not just in terms of people's ability to get grain, but the grain uh, that we need to go to market is also animal feed. And obviously fertilizers are essential for, for, the, obvious, uh, for the obvious reasons. I'm not going to go into details of what may be the sticking points uh, in the discussion. Madame Linda. Thank you, Steph. My question follows up on that, on this issue. Um, how much of a short, given the restrictions on Ukrainian and Russian wheat and food, where, how is the UN making up any shortfall? In other words, where is the UN buying food elsewhere, or how well, is that I mean, all working? It's, uh, you know, this may be a better question for our WFP guest. Um, we are, WFP and others are buy grain on the, on, the, on the market. So obviously the prices have gone up, so the costs have gone up, which is really the, the, critical, uh, the critical part. But obviously they will get the grain they need wherever they can get it, but there's less on the market, the prices go up. Okay, uh, I, yes ma'am. Um, Taliban's defense minister traveled to Doha and met with Qatari officials. Um, 
What do you th know about this trip, and do you think it's a uh, part of a uh, negotiation uh, with the West or? Uh, I mean, we group? we are not involved in those uh, in those discussions. Uh, it's obvious that the the def the the, uh, the de facto authorities in uh, in um, in in Kabul have had discussions with with Qatar and and others, but it's not something we're we're involved in. Okay, uh, we'll get our guests and be back in two seconds.